Yeah, I think we can st we can start. All right, uh, let's start. Can you hear me? Okay. Now can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our presentation today. Uh, me and the nun are going to talk about. Um, how do we uh, build a reliable, efficient, and easy to use Spark ecosystem at Uber? Next slide. Um, so here's the agenda. So I'm going to uh, give everyone a brief overview of uh, Spark at Uber, the architecture, the use case, etc. cetera. Um, then a little bit on the history, how the Spark ecosystem evolved at Uber in the past few years. Um, and then then we'll give us, uh, um, you know, share some stories about you know, uh, how we solve reliability problems, how we make Spark uh, more efficient, and how we make Spark uh, easy to use. Next, please. So, a uh, quick intro about myself. Um, I'm an engineer manager at Uber. I lead a few teams, um, including our Spark team, uh, which is the main target today, data security and privacy and file format. Uh, our teams uh, heavily depend on Apache. Um, so we use Apache Parquet for file format, uh, for security, we use Nox and Sentry, and uh, uh, we're also looking at, uh, into Apache Ranger. Um, and for Spark, of course, we use Spark. We also depend on Apache DV for uh, job service. Next. Next slide, Snap. Yeah, okay. Can you see that? Yeah. So uh, about Nan, uh, he's our uh, amazing tech lead our, uh, in, in our Spark team. Um, he's also the PMC member of XG Boost. Um, he's actually the you know the founder of XG Boost Spark project. Um, he's also serving at uh, in our Uber Open Source Machine Learning Working Group. Okay, next, next slide. Um, so a little bit about uh, about our scale. So um, Uber is um, uh, really a, a data driven company. So um, data is everywhere. Um, we, uh, just like any other company, uh, we store the data, uh, we analyze data, we extract data from, we extract insight from the data, and we use th this insight to um, um, move things around in the physical world. Um, and data lake at Uber is massive. Um, you know, we literally store every piece of data into the data lake for various use, uh, use cases. And for Spark, it's really foundational um, and it's everywhere. Um, so on a daily basis, we have about two uh, fifty thousand uh, Spark applications, and, and on our Yarn cluster, uh, which is our compute cluster, ninety eight percent of CPU uh, cycles are being used by Spark. Um, on, and on a daily basis, we have a thousand um, plus daily users. And uh, uh, in terms of table size, we have tens of petabytes of you know uh, table and one hundred um, petabytes of images. Next. All right. Um, so, as I mentioned, you know Spark is used by uh, you know all the um, you know um, organizations and teams in Uber. Um, here we list a few use cases. Um, so for um, you know instant detection, so we use Spark to automatically uh, detect incidents happening on the platform. Um, for Uber Eats, uh, we use uh, Spark to recommend uh, food for our customers. Uh, of course, if we use ETLs, you know, to you know clean up the data, transform data in various format. Um, that's but but not least fraud detection. We use Spark to detect frauds in the uh, on the system. Um, on the right side, we also have a few platforms um, that are built on top of Spark. So data ingestion, uh, which is the platform that continues to uh, transform the data from the online world, including databases, uh, Kafka, MySQL, etc., uh, into the data lake. Um, this pipeline is built on top of Spark. Um, experimentation, you know, which is the our platform to do all sorts of experiments. A/B testing, etc., is also built on top of Spark. Michelangelo, which is our uh, Uber's uh, machine learning platform, 
Uh, of course, it's also built on top, uh, on top of Spark. And all, uh, also don't notebooks, which is used by um, all the sci data scientists to um, either do um, interactive queries or sketch queries. That also uh, built on top of Spark. Next. All right, uh, very high level architecture. So uh, about you know uh, Spark and the ecosystem. So uh, if you see that on the top, you, uh, we have scheduled Spark jobs, we have interactive, uh, interactive uh, Spark jobs. All these jobs are being uh, uh, submitted to us uh, to a Spark gateway. Um, and uh, in, you know, underlying we use Levy um, uh, for uh, submit, submitting the jobs. And on the left side, we have a remote shuffle service. Um, and uh, Mayank and Bo are giving another talk on, on that. We also just open sourced uh, the, our remote shuffle uh, yesterday, so do check that out. Um, and uh, um, uh, I'm going to skip the right side for now. So um, on the uh, on the resource manager side, we have Yarn. Um, we also have Peloton, our Uber's own resource manager. Um, and the underlying is storage. It's uh, either on Prime or on, or on cloud. Um, now let's uh, zoom into the Spark ecosystem, the green box here. So this is. Uh, sorry, um, let's do mean that this. Uh, so this is really, uh, you know, um, something really helps uh, us and the customer a lot. So we build uh, tons of services um, and uh, ecosystem around this, uh, including observability. So and auto tune and the root root cause analysis. Uh, now we'll you know share more details later on. But these are really really important to make Spark uh, easy to use and more efficient than Uber. Can you go to next? Um, okay, so um, a little bit of history. Um, you know what happens at Uber, uh, especially for Spark. Um, so before twenty eighteen, um, the way you know uh, we sp sum submit Spark jobs at Uber um, is by logging to a production box. Um, as you can see, um, this is not very efficient. You know, people need to, um, you know, uh, use a very hacky way to submit the jobs. Uh, as a result of that, there's there was 19 plus Spark versions used by different teams. Um, there was no centralized Spark team or Spark gateway, etc. So around 2018, we start to build our Spark gateway service. So essentially, instead of customers logging and submitting jobs by themselves. They can submit the job to this centralized Spark gateway, uh, which handles all you know the version management, uh, the job submission, etc. Um, however, you know um, there was still lots of existing or legacy use cases where people still use the old way to do that. So in 2019, we start to migrating all these use cases to this single uh, Spark gateway service. Um, and uh, after that, we uh, we basically achieve a very important goal, which is you know all the Spark applications is being submitted in a centralized way, all the load is managed uh, centrally. So this is actually very important, you know, because of this, we were able to do lots of things, including efficiency, security, and before that, it was not even possible because people use their own way to submit jobs. Um, What's hap what will happen in the future, and what we are working on right now? Uh, of course, we are looking at uh, Spark 3.0 uh, very actively, uh, but our long-term vision um, is, uh, is inclu uh, also includes auto-optimized configurations. This has been a pain point for, from our customers. Uh, they don't want to deal with you know uh, hundreds of configurations and to tune these jobs. We want to we want our Spark ecosystem to do that for the customers. We also want to um, achieve SOA oriented goal. So, which means whenever you submit a Spark job, we auto optimize the configuration in order to satisfy this SOA for the customers. Um, with that, I'm going to turn over to uh, Nan, who is going to share a few stories. Go ahead, Nan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks to Wei for uh, giving an introduction about uh, Spark at Uber. And uh, next, I will share several stories we have in the journey of uh, improving reliability, efficiency, and the usability of our Spark system. So first the story is about uh, reliability. Uh, reliability is a fundamental goal for us to build a Spark at Uber, because whether we have a reliable Spark service directly impacts several critical business scenarios. For example, 
uh, whether our engineers and the data scientists uh, can get a timely and uh, correct the data for analysis, and uh, whether Uber Eats can uh, recommend the most favorite food to the users. And when we talk about the reliability of Spark service, we are actually faced with the upper bound uh, of reliability set by our dependencies, like Yarn, Hive Meta Store, HDFS, because we can never expect to build a Spark service with a, a 3 9 reliability SLA if those dependencies are lower than 3 9. Uh, and uh, at some time point, we did experience several issues with these uh, dependencies. For example, we have an uh, unexpected uh, fair over or resource manager. Uh, we have a frequent timeout of uh, uh, HMS requests sent from our Spark applications. After we tried everything to improve these uh, systems, uh, like Yarn, HMS itself, we actually received some uh, surprising feedback from our partner teams. Uh, for example, young team told us that, um, uh, yeah, our resource manager fair over rate is a bit higher than usual, but uh, seems Spark job service contributed a lot of RPC traffic pressure. And similarly, Hive team told us that um, we assigned you three HMS instance. However, it seems that all applications are just use one of them for more than 95% of requests, which makes that particular instance to be uh, more fragile. So then we started to check back every component in our Spark service stack. We found out that there are several design flaws which could only surface up at Uber's scale. For example, we built our Spark job service on top of Apache DB, and we found that DB assigns an application handler for every user request. Uh, when the user wants to start a new Spark application, this application handler will get all application list from resource manager to check whether a new application ID has been assigned to this user. And uh, if the user's application has been running, then this application handler will periodically query resource manager to update the application status. With this architecture, we can see that uh, the number of concurrent threads querying resource manager equals to the number of active user requests in our system. And given Uber's scale, you can uh, imagine that this number could be very, very large and bring a lot of pressure to uh, resource manager. To resolve this problem, we add a new layer called the Yarn Interaction Manager uh, in Libby. It, this layer gets information from Yarn within a single thread and then it dispatch fetch the information to all the application handlers. Uh, in this way, we can significantly reduce the traffic between Levy and the ER so that we make a resource manager take less traffic, it becomes more reliable, and in turn, improve the reliability of our Spark service itself. Similarly, in Hive side, we found that uh, the built-in HMS client in Spark Distro actually cannot leverage multiple HMS uh, URLs properly. And also it initializes itself with the expensive operation like the list or the UDF uh, register in Hive. By fixing these two issues, we can get a well balanced load between all the Spark applications and the HMS. And also, we get a 20x traffic reduction between Spark applications and uh, uh, HMS. So to complete this diagram uh, where we said that um, our service dependencies like a Yarn HMS set an upper bound of reliability to uh, Spark service. But since here we, we are operating Spark service at a very large scale, we get the capability to lift in this reliability upper bound by hardening our job service and the Spark, Spark uh, distro itself. So we improve the reliability of dependency and which in turn ben uh, be beneficial to ourselves. Uh, this is the first story. Uh, the second one is about uh, efficiency. Uh, efficiency is also a very critical goal for us because uh, uh, efficiency decides uh, the operating cost for our data infrastructure. Uh, it also decides the velocity for us to make data-driven decisions. However, we faced a common challenge uh, with uh, many other Spark teams in different companies. That is, um, uh, customers' workloads are kind of black box to us because Spark is so flexible 
uh, users can build their applications on top of RDD, on top of uh, Spark SQL, that's that frame, and they're programming in different language. And it makes us very hard to answer, for example, what is the general bottleneck for all the Spark applications in Uber? And even we build something in production, how to measure the effectiveness of this feature and enable us to continuously improve that. To resolve this problem, we build a customer observability stack. Through Spark Gateway and Job Service, we can inject some parameters into user request so that the Spark applications running in our cluster not only runs user logic, but also JVM profiler and Spark listener. And uh, these two things will collect metrics like uh, CPU memory utilization and also uh, Spark specific metrics like uh, input size, shuffle size. And uh, these metrics are synchronized to Kafka topic. When the application is finished, we leverage uh, uh, Yarn log aggregation service to, to collect application logs to HTTPS. And then we have log X, which is a Spark-based log mining pipeline to collect the logs from HTFS and apply analysis like root cause, root cause uh, analysis and the specific log parsing. And the result is sent to Kafka as well. Finally, we utilize the data ingestion mechanism in, our, uh, in Uber to synchronize the Kafka topic and hive tables. And then our engineers can perform some analysis on top of the of these uh, hive tables to find the uh, issues. And then next, uh, I will introduce an example how we uh, leverage this customer observability stack to get a feature bringing 2x performance boost in Uber. Uh, first, uh, we instrument a lot of logs in our internal Spark distro to dissect the performance of uh, applications. On this page, I'm showing that um, uh, we are instru uh, instrumenting a log in data source scanning operator in Spark so that we can measure the latency on this part. And then we develop a module in log X, uh, which I said it, it is a Spark-based log mining pipeline to parse these logs and get information like a latency number and send the collected, uh, analyze the data to Kafka. After the Kafka topic had been automatically ingested into a hive table, we can run SQL queries to uh, do some metrics analysis. Okay, through these steps, we actually detect a common customer issue. We found that applications accessing tables with nested column prunings are usually having very long table scanning time. And if we compare this type of applications with others, we find that they are usually the most expensive ones. This makes us associate the observer uh, observation to a missing feature in open source version of Spark. Uh, that is the nested column pruning. Essentially, nested column pruning says that um, if I want to fetch a nested column uh, in a table, how many columns I need to fetch from storage system? In, uh, in the example of this page, uh, do, if I just want to query column zero, do I need to fetch the column zero or I need to fetch all the columns under the same parent column? So actually, open source version of Spark had very limited support of this feature. Uh, before 2.4, uh, we don't have a support for this at all. And in 2.4, it only supports select and filter. And in the Spark 3, which just released several months ago, uh, it has a wider range of support, but still missing, uh, missing, the case, uh, missing the support for cases like join and windowing. Uh, back to two years ago, uh, we start to build a nested column pruning feature in Uber uh, internally. We can support all query patterns ranging from scan, filter, uh, join, windowing. And because of this feature, we can bring uh, more than 2x performance boost to many pipelines. Here I show an example from one of the most expensive and critical uh, smart pipelines in Uber. Uh, with, we can actually leverage the nested column pruning feature to reduce the running time uh, by 2x. So for the summary of uh, this story, uh, efficiency is very critical, but uh, you need to bring the efficiency with the customer insights. Uh, the more you understand your customer, the higher impact you can bring with your uh, uh, Spark service. And uh, given the Uber-like scale of Spark service, it's, um, 
it is very hard for you to talk with every customer and build every customer specific feature one by one. So you need to build a systematic mechanism to capture characteristics of customer workloads and help you to build efficiency related features. So next story. Uh, after we have a reliable and efficiency Spark service, a common comment from our customers is still like, um, uh, Spark is very powerful, but it is so hard to use. Seems we are still missing the last key to success. So the last key is actually usability. Uh, let's review what our customer have to do when they use Spark. So they have to uh, code in their laptop, of course, and then after they finish the first version of code, they need to uh, package their applications and upload to a remote server and log in there. And then they run and debug in remote servers and tune their applications. And uh, then they come back to their laptop to revise the code and uh, uh, repeat this process. We can see that there are several steps which is either so tedious and time consuming, for example, like um, uh, upload a file to remote server, log in there, trigger application. And also, even they have run their application, they are faced with uh, four of mysterious logs and they have hundreds of Spark parameters for tuning. And even they have deployed their Spark application to production. After some time, it becomes very hard for them to track what's the current version of uh, uh, application running in production because they may forget uh, whether I deploy every commit of my master branch to pr production. So to resolve the problems in this side, we build a set of tools. First tool is the Dragon CRI. It enables our customer to develop and run Spark applications just from their laptop. Within a single JSON file, they can configure how to deploy their applications they can also uh, configure how they want to launch these Spark applications. What they need to do is just to write a JSON file and run two commands in their laptop, uh, Dragon Deploy and Dragon Launch. And behind these two commands, our tool are interacting with the remote systems uh, automatically. And also we integrate with the CI CD system. Uh, users can specify repo name and git tag uh, so that they can easily track what's the current version running there. And also they can configure how, uh, whether to automatically release a new version of Spark on a commit in master branch. And to help our customer debug their applications, we have a root cause analysis pipeline. Here I show the configuration file in our root cause uh, um, pipeline, uh, which, where we map the log entries to the possible reason of a failure of Spark applications. And we also have a work in progress project called uh, Harmonix, uh, which will help our customers to, automat to automatically tune Spark applications based on different goals, like uh, whether I want to make a Spark application more efficient or I want to make the running time more predictable. So in summary, uh, Spark at Uber runs at a very unique scale for very diverse usage uh, scenarios. And uh, our Spark system has evolved from a pre-built distro to a full-fledged service in the last two to three years. Uh, we have a unified Spark uh, job service. We centralized, uh, we manage the versions in a centralized way. And also we bring a lot of custom, customized optimizations uh, in our internal Spark distro. And also we share stories about uh, uh, Serving Spark at Uber at Uber scale is very challenging. Uh, we care about reliability, but since we operate in a large scale, we can lift the reliability upper bound by hardening service and destroy yourself. And also we care about efficiency. To bring efficiency at a very large scale, you need to uh, build your customer insights with a systematic way. And the usability is the last key to uh, make you success in your Spark service. You need to understand the customer workflow and the resolve problems one by one. So one last thing, uh, if you enjoy our talks and you want to be part of our journey to make Spark and Uber better and better, uh, we are hiring. This is the uh, talk and uh, this is the talk and the hiring and the hiring link. 
and feel free to talk to us uh, uh, offline and drop me your resume. Thanks. Uh, questions? I can pick up questions. So the first question from Rob is about, uh, where you committed the Spark Brewing improvements back to community? Also, where you open source to unify the uh, job service? Uh, so in, in the latest the matter branch, uh, Spark community has implemented the, the next account pruning in Spark 3 in a very different way. So we uh, didn't, so we cannot contribute contribute back at this point since we go into different technical paths. Uh, and uh, in Spark 3 by default, you can get this uh, feature. In, but with some limited support for several pattern of queries, in the coming Spark 3.1, uh, which is supposed to be released in December, uh, you can get a full-fledged Nancy Color Pruning feature. Uh, where you open source the Unified Job Service, uh, Actually, we build on top of uh, open source Apache DB. Uh, we have two components in the job service. One is the gateway. That has a lot of Uber specific logic there. So we don't uh, plan to open source that. But uh, for Levy, we have uh, we are building on top of uh, open source. And uh, in Levy community, there has been some discussion about uh, uh, similar uh, issues like uh, uh, Levy start two minutes threads, whatever. Uh, but uh, there haven't been a conclusion. At some time point, uh, when there is an agreement, we can contribute back. Uh, your injection manager feature in Libby is available in open source. Uh, from from a clear about the question of uh, your injection manager feature, no, it is not in um, open source. Uh, this is actually uh, achieved by our Spark gateway. That's called a Dragon. You can check our uh, Uber engineering blog, we have this description there. But uh, as I said, there are a lot of Uber specific feature in that system. So uh, we don't have any reason to plan to open source that. Uh, next question from Patrick. Uh, have you guys applied any machine learning to help optimize your Spark parameters? Uh, this is a good question. We explore some way, some machine learning based way to optimize uh, uh, parameters, but uh, seems there are, since the environment of a yarn, of cluster is uh, so dynamic, so uh, it's uh, hard to capture a good uh, say, training set or feature set. So uh, now we are thinking about a uh, start from rule based uh, to work on this. Uh, next question, Wen Sheng, about uh, are your applications node exclusive or do you have a task from multiple applications running on the same node? If yes, how do you prevent applications from uh, from interfering with each other? Uh, this is also a very good question. So in our YAR cluster, we actually set the maxim, uh, maximum number of cores and uh, uh, memory space every container can use. So it's provide some kind of uh, uh, resource isolation, but also, but still we face some issues uh, for uh, if we say one of uh, Spark application just uh, dump a lot of data to local disk, that will affect others. This kind of things are still discussing how, how can uh, be achieved. But um, currently we just uh, uh, limit uh, uh, of data can be dumped to local disk from every Spark application. Uh, next question from Evans. How is the user code being shipped by Dragon CRI? Is it compiled and the SCP and rsync that you get away or solution? Yes, it's essentially a rsync. You package and then you rsync to get away and then upload it to HDFS for running. Uh, do you enable C group? Uh, uh, next question: Do you enable C group or what? Uh, we, uh, you know, we we enable C group in Yarn. Yeah, I think so. This is probably a follow-up question from the previous question. Yeah. Yes. I think the answer is yes. Any more questions?
Yeah, I guess that's all the questions. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Um, as Nan mentioned, we are hiring, so, and, um, you know, to talk to us if you're interested. Uh, we also have the remote shuffle uh, talk to, to check that out as well. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you.